Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to take a look at this supervision library from Roboflow. So basically just going to see how we can use it, how we can do object detection, do visualizations, annotations, bounding boxes around that, a lot of different types of bounding boxes. We can do blurring, pixelation, and all of those different kinds of things on top of our bounding boxes, specify labels, and it is really easy to use. We can convert different models. We get detections from object detection models directly convert to supervision. So we can use that for visualizing our update detection results. So we're going to see all of that. We're going to go through the GitHub repository, the documentation, and then we're going to see some examples in custom Python script, where we're going to use ULV8 to do some detections and visualizations with supervision. So let's not just jump straight into the GitHub repository. We're inside the supervision repository by Roboflow. You can see all of the code here, but let's scroll down to actually like see the documentation. So to have a bunch of examples in here that you can use directly, we can go inside the documentation and see how we can use it and also specify different types of arguments. So the only thing that you need to do is to go in and pip install the supervision. And we're basically just getting started right off the box. So quick start, different models we can use like YOLO V8 and a bunch of other different types of object detection models. Then we do our inference, we take our image, load it in with whatever we are used to, um, OpenCV, PIL, and so on. We can also just directly specify a URL to YouTube, webcam stream, and so on. Then we take the results from our model and we actually just import them or convert them to supervision. So to have a bunch of different methods implemented for the connectors, we can just take a look at that to start with. So from Autolytics, if you're using YOLOV8, YOLOV5, we just have detections dot from Autolytics, and then it's going to create this detections instance class. So if you just go inside of one of them, here we have the core for supervision. So we have the detections. We need to specify X, Y, X, Y, mask, confidence, class ID, track ID, and also the data. So basically all the most common update detection models out there are all implemented directly in supervision. And that's why it is so easy to use because again, you can set up your whole script, you can set up your visualizer and everything, and then you can swap your models out easily as well. So we both have Azure Analyze image, Deep Spark, Detection True, Inference, MM Detection, Paddle Dead, RoboFlow, SAM, Segment Anything, TensorFlow, Transformers, Autolytics, Yolo Nash, and so on. So we can take an arbitrary object detection model, directly convert that into supervision and use all the functionalities in here. So this is pretty cool. Then we can set it up. We set up our detections and we can go down and create our annotators. They are highly customizable. If you just go inside the documentation in a second, we can see all the different arguments that we can specify for it. But again, the first one that we set up is our bounding box annotator class, and we can just directly go in and call annotate. We specify the scene, so the image that we want to draw our annotation on, and also the detections that we got from our object detection model. And again, this can just be an arbitrary object detection model as we just saw. Then they have a bunch of different ways to annotate the images. Could be like these dots with our track lines if you're doing object tracking. We can also have this cross here. We can have like opacity, heat maps. Um, we can do all of this. We can specify the labels, classes, confidence scores, even these circles here around the people. We can go in and do blurring, pixelation, and all of those things. We're going to see that in just a second, how to use it. So if you have a custom data set, you want to train your own computer vision models, you can also set up the data sets with uh, supervision. We set up our data set and then we can train our models directly. So they also have a bunch of tutorials in here. Definitely go in, check them out. We can do speed estimation, traffic analysis. They have a bunch of different things in here and all of it is built on top of supervision. So again, we can just see all of these cool examples. We have like some soccer here. So here we can see an example with traffic analysis uh, results. We're basically just tracking all of these uh, cars driving around. We're doing detections and counting in each individual zone. So we can see like how many cars going in and also out. We also have this vehicle step and so on, and we can go inside their documentation. So if you just go inside that to start with, before we're going to jump into a custom Python script and see how we can use it. And then we're going to go back and forth between documentation and the Python script. So we can do detection and annotation, track objects, filter objects and zones. We can also count objects crossing lines. Here we install it. You can just go through all of it and we can go inside our how to. So let's just start with detection and annotation. Object tracking is pretty much the same. We're just tracking the objects over time. The visualizations and so on is the exact same thing. We can also filter our detections in here, but again, let's just start with detect and annotate. We use the Autolytics here, just set it up easily. You can just copy paste these code snippets. We can get inference here if you want to use inference from RoboFlow directly or Autolytics. Then we can load our predictions. We already know how to do that from all of these different frameworks and different computer vision models and libraries. Then we can annotate our images. We set up a bounding box annotator, our label annotator. Then we can specify all the labels 
that we want to go in and annotate. Then we can set up our annotated image with our annotator and also our label annotator. So this is all you have to do. You can just take this code snippet, throw it directly into your own custom Python script, and you have a computer vision model up and running with these visualizations and detections from supervision. So this is basically the results that we're going to get. Let's just go in and do it in a second. And then we can display the annotated images with svplot or we can just image show it with OpenCV. So we're gonna jump straight into the Python script. Everything that I've done is copy pasted the code snippet inside my Python script and this code will also be available on my GitHub down in the description. So I've just done some minor modifications where we're now just running through a while loop instead of individual images. So we just open up a video capture, could be an arbitrary video, could also be like your webcam and so on. We open up a video capture. First of all, we set up our YOLO model, box annotator as we just went over in the documentation, the label annotator, and then we can go down in our while loop. Throw an image through the model, get the results, convert it from autolytics to supervision. We set up our labels, annotate our frame here with our box annotator. And then we also have our um, annotated frame down here with our label annotator. So we're both going to draw the bounding box and also the label on top of it. Then we're going to route it out to a video file and also show the image directly with OpenCV. So now we're actually ready to go. We can just go up and open a new terminal. There we go. And let's just call Python. supervision underscore yt.py. Let's run it. It's going to act like down the model weights automatically if you haven't run this before. But now we can actually see we get our detections. We get our label on top of it. So this is 39 in this example. So these are uh, bottles from uh, the Coco data set. So this is actually like pretty cool. Again, we can also go in and specify the specific labels. So if you just grab labels equal labels, then we just have to throw that into our label annotator. So now we'll get the labels that we either have from the Coco dataset or from our own custom trained model. So now we're detecting these bottles in the frame. Let's go in and find another video that we can try out. So I just have a bunch of videos here. Let's try to see that. So we have New York interchange system, city traffic here. So let's just try to go in and grab one of these. Maybe just go with this one here, New York in this interchange. I'm going to copy the relative path, go back again. And now we just need to swap out the video. There we go. We can rerun it and then we're actually going to set it up. We should just get the result in just a second. There we go. And now we can just see that we're detecting all of these cars here driving around. We have a bus here, which is actually like a truck, but sometimes it takes it as a train. We can fill that out with confidence scores and so on. So now we get the bus here and also the truck. So we can see that it actually gets most of the cars driving around, even though they're relatively small in this video here. Okay, so let's now go ahead and see how we can actually run it um, on a webcam. So instead of specifying a video path, we can just specify the index to our webcam. If you just have a single webcam or a single camera attached to your computer, you can just specify zero, but I have two in the example, so I'm going to specify a one. Then we can run it again, and now we should be able to run it on a webcam. So I'm just going to grab my webcam here, and we should actually get the detections in just a second. So here we can see your keyboard, mouse, keyboard, Let's see what we give it up here, laptop. And over here to the left, we get bottle, person, TV, laptop, person here with my hand, mouse. Here we get a vase, which is actually like a, is actually like a spear. So here we can actually see that we're running 12, 13 milliseconds inference per image. So that's almost 80 frames per second. So this is pretty real time. And again, this is the medium model that I'm running on a 3070 GPU. So here we can also turn around and it's going to detect me as a person. So let's now go inside the documentation. Let's see how we can actually like play around with it. We can see all the different arguments that we can specify also from segment anything. So we can also take a look at how we can fill the detection. So we can specify the specific class ID that we want to detect. Let's say that we only want to detect class ID zero. So that is a car in this example. We can also buy a set of classes. So that will basically just be a list now instead or it could be by confidence score. So we probably want to do that with confidence scores well because we saw that in our car video, like sometimes we got some wrong predictions and we just have to do it directly after we have created our detections. So this is how we can do the filtering based on confidence and then all the classes, all the objects that were detected with a confidence score lower than 0.5, so 50% confidence. Then we're just going to delete all of those detections and we only want to use those detections above this threshold. So this is also one of the reasons why you should use supervision for playing around, visualizing, filtering your optic detection results. Because they, again, this is pretty easy. You don't have to have a follow loop running through all the detections. We can just directly do it in here. 
So again, we can also do by area, by relative area. You can go in and take a look at all of these ones here. So you can basically see like, okay, how large your bounding boxes be? How much overlap can there be? Basically an intersection or union, we can play around with that. So detections.area, image area, and it has to be less than uh, 0.8. So this is pretty cool. We can also do it by dimensions, polygon zone. You can draw different polygon zones only if you only want to do detections in the upper half of the image. Uh, mix conditions, so you can basically mix all of these filterings and so on. But you can go into details with that if you want to use it for your specific applications and projects. The most common ones is pretty, pretty much just like filtering based on objects or like labels if you're using a pre-trained model or also the confidence score. So now we have everything here. Let's go in and see how we can actually use the API for our, for example, like our annotators. Now we also saw in the start that we have this blur. So you can play around with this yourself. It is only a few lines of code that I'm changing here and there, and you have it directly in here. So even though I'm just scrolling through these, it's just a few lines of code that you actually like have to change. And the detection, the whole format is the exact same thing. So it's now going to blur it here. So right now I'm just going to set up this blur annotator. So now we can jump back into our code, set up our blur annotator. Let's get this out of the while loop up to the other one. So we have our blur annotator, label annotator, and also our bounding box annotator. So it's now going down and use it. I'm just going to throw this in with a tap and we have our image. Let's swap that out with our M. There we go. Now we should have our blur annotator and then all the labels and all the classes, all the objects that we're detecting, we're basically just going to blur them out. So now we should be able to go in and delete our bounding box annotator. There we go. Let's try to run it and see some results. So I'm just going to grab my webcam here again. Let's just run it directly on the live stream. So that is significantly cooler. So now we can see the mouse is blurred out the keyboard. If I'm turning this around, I should also be blurred out. And you should probably also be able to specify like how much blurry effect that you want to have. But this is pretty cool. You can go in and do the filtering and so on if you only want to blur out persons that you're taking in the frame. So if you just go back how to, you can also do this for classification, detection tools, trackers. You can go in and do object tracking if you want to track your objects over a number of frames. But if you just go back here again for filtering detections, we only care about like the class ID zero. So let's try to do that. It should be zero for a person. Could also be like, yeah, core class should be zero for a person, but let's see if that is the case. And we're also going to do the filtering, detection class ID, and then we actually need to uh, go in and grab all of it. There we go, we have the confidence score, and now we also filter it based on the class. So we could probably just put this on top of that one, um, but let's just keep it in this way. That's not too important. Let's run it again, and let's see if we're only detecting uh, people now in our frame. There we go, we're not detecting uh, a mouse any longer. If I take my hand up, we can see that we're now detecting a person. If I'm moving it around, we can see that we're still detecting me as a person, even though I'm moving it around, it will blur me out as long as we have the detections. So now I'm moving it around, we should probably be able to blur it out over here as well. There you go. So definitely going to check out the supervision, use it when you're using object detection models, when you're doing object tracking, playing around with your computer vision application and projects, because it's pretty cool. You can get all of this up and running in just a few lines of code. And it also goes really nice hand in hand with the Autolytics framework and those models. So now we have a whole computer vision project up and running with only a few lines of code. So I hope you have learned a ton of this video here, guys. If you want to learn more about like how you can train your own custom object detection models with Yolovi 8, how we can do object tracking, basically set up the whole pipelines from end to end. Now we can use it with supervision as well. I have the courses on my website for all of those different kind of things. If you're interested in any of those, definitely go ahead and check them out on my website or else on the next week, guys. Until then, happy learning.